I invite you, if you're able, to please rise. My friends, we gather here on this day to give thanks and to celebrate the life of an incredible, incredible woman who lived an incredible life. Perhaps nothing more needs to be said than that. A faithful servant of God served her church and community and her family well. A blessed saint. And for that, we give thanks as we gather on this day. We want to welcome you as we do so to remember and honor and give thanks for Barb's life. And in doing so throughout the service, uh, we'll be celebrating not only with uh, the folks gathered here in the sanctuary, but by many who are watching virtually online. And so we send our blessings uh, through cyberspace somewhere to all those, and uh, we hope that they are blessed by the presence as well. For those of you who have gathered here, we will be celebrating with a meal immediately following the service. It'll be in our fellowship hall, which is located directly behind the sanctuary. We'll invite you to go there to find a seat. We'll have a blessing and then dismiss you uh, table by table along the way. Most of all, a very heartfelt and warm blessing to you, the family. We know that God has been with Gary and Barb over these last few years in particular and with each of you as you've journeyed with her in these last days. And we know that God is with us now in this time as well. Barbara Joanne Ellison Carew, 79, of Rochester, Minnesota, died on October 7, 2021. Barbara was born on April 16, 1942, in Rochester, Minnesota, to Herman and Mabel Ellison. In 1960, she graduated from John Marshall High School in March of 1963, she married Gary Carew, the love of her life. She worked with Northwestern Bell and U.S. West for over 30 years. After retiring, Barb and Gary loved to travel, and that is for sure. I, heard, I think I've heard of every trip they took. Uh, they went on five cruises, Hawaii, Alaska, Mediterranean, and the Bahamas, and they also traveled throughout the United States, both to the East and West Coasts. Barb was a longtime member of this church, Peace Church, United Church of Christ. She loved this church. She taught Bible study for several years, was a funeral chairperson, belonged to Miriam Circle and Senior Saints. She also loves spending time with her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Barbara survived by her daughter Pamela Lanquang of, of Bootier, California, son Daniel Carew of Rochester, Minnesota, grandchildren Andrew and Gabe Paredes of Whittier, California, Adam and Eleanor Quang of, of Worcester, Massachusetts, and Bailey Carew of Rochester, Great-grandchildren, Nadia and Evelyn Paredes of Whittier, California. Sisters-in-law, Char Ellison of Rochester. Jean Carew of Albert Lee and Glenda Andrus of Rochester. She was preceded in death by her husband, Gary. And her parents, brother David and sister Margie. We give thanks. We give thanks. Well, Barb gave me instructions, nothing new. And so the scriptures and the music, um, I did take some liberties with the family's permission, but um, I for sure have everything that Barb wanted in place. And this, I want to just share a passage of scripture that I know spoke to her, and she wanted that here today. From Ecclesiastes chapter 3. 
For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time like this to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Here this day, the promises of God. For we hear in Scripture, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die to behold, I am alive forevermore. Because I live, you also shall live. That's the promise of God I know that Barb lived by. That was kind of her mantra. Because I live, you also shall live. I invite you, if you are able, as we come together on this day, to join in our gathering that is in your bulletin and on the screen for us today. I invite you, as we gather in worship this day, to celebrate what God is doing. Eternal God, creator of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth and who by breath gives us life. Jesus the Christ, the resurrection and the life suffered even unto death for all humanity and who rose from the grave to free us all for eternity. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life and comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. O Holy One, bless us as we gather and unite us in one voice as we pray. Our Father. Well, we give thanks today for all the gifts that are shared. And one of the things that uh, Barb really wanted was this song. It's called, I Was Here, There, there to Hear Your Morning Cry. And actually, three of us would spend a lot of time singing around the community and over at Samaritan. And, and uh, Barb loved that so much. And so we share this as a gift. <laughs> there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you
complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been with just Well, we are blessed by music today, and as we gather that song, how it speaks to us about our journey. Hold on, I'm going. And we celebrate all those rich, wonderful gifts that God has blessed us with. One of Barb's most uh, important things, I think she did an outreach, is working as a volunteer over at Samaritan Bethany, and for the last few years has lived there as well. And so Pastor Glenn, the chaplain from Samaritan, is going to share a few words with us today in a prayer. So thank you, Glenn, for being here. Well, for a year and a half, we've all been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It's been extremely pronounced at Samaritan Bethany. I am sure at most nursing homes, that's been the case. It's been very difficult. There have been days where I thought I was going to die. I was going to take my last breath. Too much empathy with the residents, I presume. And Barb was sort of a life raft to help me get through that. So even though it was difficult, it is good. And as Psalm 23 states, God can set a feast in front of us in times like this. And boy, Barb was good at that, wasn't she? I heard... You know, I've been around a lot of dying people. I have never seen a happier dying person in my life as Barb. And uh, was it? Oh, yeah, you're a nurse. You were around a lot of dying people, too, and you said the same thing. Never has there been somebody so happy in her last days. And I looked at her presiding over the family gathering like a queen. And she was eating it up, wasn't she? Stories about her and, uh, you know, her working years, her years of raising children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And I heard those great-grandchildren and all the rest of you were the greatest painkillers that she had. Thank you for coming here, painkillers. Keep up the good work. And I thought, this is a woman who focuses on true wisdom. That is, teach us to number our days, O Lord, so that we may gain a wise heart. Focusing on God is true wisdom. And so it made me think of the last chapter of Proverbs, where... King Lemuel is getting words of wisdom from his mother about how he should conduct himself and what kind of wife he should uh, marry as a wise wife. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him, no, my son, no son of my womb, no son of my vows. Do not give your strength to women. She's talking about a certain kind of women. Your ways to, to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine. Or for rulers to desire strong drink. 
or else they will drink and forget what has been decreed. So don't get so drunk that you forget the laws that God has given us. Or else they will drink and forget what has been decreed and will pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress, like opiates that Barb needed to keep her sanity. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. It was amazing that Barb was in so much pain, you know, she was dizzy and still brought people to worship in the chapel even when she was suffering. She didn't even know yet that she had cancer. So let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. You think Gary would agree with that? I think so. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She who took care of the books and invested wisely and became wealthy. I think the greatest wealth is her faith and her love for us. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant and she brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. I heard she prepared dinners for, for you when she was working, you children. And all, what was it? It was on a Rolodex or something and it was scheduled so that you could feed yourself. Just throw it in the oven. You were fed well. So she rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. She was a good investor. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed with crimson. She's good at preparation. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates. Now this is the center of a couple of poems. This is an acrostic poem that I'm reading. An acrostic is like you take the word mother and you start, M is for the many things my mother made for me, like dinner. O is for the other things my mother made, you know, T-H. So these ancient poets were really very sophisticated. And the center of the acrostic poem is her husband is known in the city gates. She supported her husband. And that was through these wise ways of being a woman of faith to build him up and her family. And that's how you change the world. One person at a time, starting with her. So her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and she supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. That's true of her in spades. She was good at bringing out the best in people. She looks well to the ways of her household 
and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. I like a better translation of this. Her children rise up and call her blessed. You, can, you have been doing that, haven't you? Continue to do that. Carry on her legacy. Every time I do a funeral, I think about the person who is deceased and how did they reflect the spirit of God during their life. She was like a searchlight. Very strong reflection of the spirit of God. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellence excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. Amen, Barb. So, we have learned wisdom from Barb. Now it's our job to take up that legacy, that mantle, and reflect that light the way she did. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the wisdom that was reflected in this gifted life of Barb. We give thanks for her life among us and for her legacy that we might learn to reflect your light the way she did, in the way that we can reflect it. We give thanks for this amazing grace in our midst. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Glenn, for those words today. I want to share with you um, a poem that was written by uh, Barb's mother, Mabel. It's a beautiful poem that really does uh, hold us near and close today. So I want you to just listen to this, take that in, and you can see where Barb gets some of her wisdom and grace along the way. This is entitled Prayer. For life's rich blessings which become more bountiful each year, I offer grateful thanks, dear Lord, for these I hold most dear. I thank thee for thy steadfast love that will never fail, against which neither life or death nor aught else can prevail. For grace by which thou dost forgive the sins I would confess, I give thee thanks that I am cleansed from all unrighteousness. I thank thee, Lord, that I may come into thy throne in prayer and find within thy perfect will by strength and solace there. I thank thee that thou gave thy son to die at Calvary and thus prepare my dwelling place in paradise with thee. Such beautiful poem, but powerful words. We give thanks. Well, we wanted to take a time today uh, to make sure that the family has an opportunity to share their blessings as well. And we're going to start, we have a couple of videos that we'll be showing as well for those who are unable to come, uh, very powerful, and I'll be sharing um, one reading from Pam. But we're going to watch uh, Kevin's video first, and then uh, we'll hear some speakers. Hello. For many of you who don't know who I am, my name is Kevin Qual. If you've seen this video, you probably know how amazing Grandma Barb was. Um, a lot of great memories I have as a child include, you know, Grandma Barb and Grandpa Gary. Um, they helped shape me as a person I am today, and I'll be forever grateful. Um, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for allowing me to call you Grandma. I'll miss you and strive to be as kind and generous and Amazing with you. Love you. Such beautiful words. I invite Gloria to come forward if she would, please. Uh, Gloria, dear, dear friend of Barb, and uh, thank you for sharing today with us.
Barb and Gary and myself have been friends for way over 50 years. We've had many good times together. We went on many vacations and concerts, road trips, which we always ended up in the park to have our wine time. We are here today to celebrate Barb's final journey here on Earth. In the last three weeks, we have shared a lot of our great memories with her kids and grandkids. Of course, they were able to share a lot of their memories with us also. What a great way for Barb to end her life. Barb said many times, I don't know why I'm so lucky to be able to spend my last days enjoying my family and friends. Barb had a very strong faith. She did a lot in her church. I believe one of the things she enjoyed the most was her Bible study. Mm -hmm. Each week when we got together, she would tell me what my priest would be talking about. And sure enough, she was right. It only goes to show, no matter what church you belong to, we all have the same God. Because of her strong faith, I believe it helped her with a peaceful death. She had two wonderful priests. Oh, excuse me. Pastor Paul from Peace Church and Pastor Glenn from Arbor Terrace, who was with her every day these last three weeks. I just had to add that thing about the priest to get even with Barb, because when she introduced me to her friends from church, she always would say, she's Catholic, but we won't hold that against her. <laughs> oh. Hold just a second, I have a call. I can't talk now, I'm busy. Okay, I remember. Goodbye. That was Barb. She reminded me about what we talked about a few days ago. She said, don't worry, Gloria. Even after I'm gone, I'll still be by your side. Rest in peace, my friend, until we meet again. Thank you, Gloria. Bailey, why don't you come up and share? We are so blessed, and, and I want to thank Gloria for her friendship, too. I know how special it was to have you there. So, Bailey, thank you for sharing your words today. Well, Barb Carew, what can you say about her? She was a loving wife, a mother, a grandmother, even a great-grandmother. She was a loyal family member, a tremendous volunteer, class president of Arbor Terrace, as we call it, and devoted to her religion. But most of all, she was a friend to everyone. Like my dad has told me, she isn't just my mom. She's my best friend. She was everything all in one to us. My grandma made sure to tell everyone about how much of a grandpa's girl I was. She failed to mention of how much of a grandma's girl I actually was. I had the privilege of my grandma and grandpa getting to watch me as a baby my entire life growing up. I may not remember it all, but they made sure to take pictures to show me once I grew up. My grandma loved pictures so much. Even after watching me for the years when I was a baby, she was there every step of me growing up, whether it be watching me play softball, no matter what the weather was like, or watching me race my race car. We always would do our annual fashion shows before the school year started. She was the best grandma I could have asked for. We all know it didn't take much to make her happy, a text, a call, a hug, or even a mini road trip. Dollar General was her favorite one. Grandma enjoyed the little things in life, like making cards for birthdays, anniversaries, or any holiday. She also never missed a country music award. She would print off the ballots, and we would all vote for her favorite artist or song, and she might slip an extra vote into a category every once in a while and want to count it for a win if they won. However, the things she talked about the most and that she enjoyed the most were her kids, her grandkids, her great-grandkids, and all of the adventures 
with her friends. I will never forget any of the lessons my grandma taught me. I'll use them every day for the rest of my life. Her lessons were to be a kind soul, to love everyone. She'll be missed dearly, not only by me, but everyone. I'd like to leave you guys with a poem that reminded me of my grandma. If tears could build a stairway and memories were a lane, we would walk right up to heaven and bring you back again. No farewell words were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. Our hearts still ache in sadness, and secret tears still flow. What it meant to lose you, no one will ever know. But know we know you want us to mourn you for no more. To remember all the times life still has in store. Since you'll never be forgotten, we pledge to you today a hallowed place within our hearts to where you'll always stay. I love you, Grandma. Thank you, Bailey. One well, thing about the blessings is she could touch generations. It didn't matter how old or how young you were, she was there. And the beauty of that. Pam has asked me to read for you her remembrance and testament. So I wish on behalf of Mella, which was Barb's name for her, nickname for her, I read this. Two years ago, I lost one of the most important men in my life, my father. However, he surprised me by sending me a gift, a beautiful angel from heaven and a grandchild named Nadia to ease my pain and loss. I say he sent her because my daughter and her husband had been longing for a child. And when I talked to my dad on the day he was passing, that was one of the, thing, of the two things I had requested. And behold, the month after he passed, we were blessed with the great news. Then he sent me another blessing, another little angel named Evelyn. I chuckled off, and as if it was so quick in succession after Nadia and joked, maybe it was his Alzheimer's, and he had forgotten that he had already answered my prayers to Nadia. But now I understand why he did it and what he did. It was so Nadia could have a companion and to once again ease my pain as he needed his own companion mom back with him. He knew mom would be joining him sooner than any of us could have anticipated. Thank you for all the blessings, Dad. Mom, I love you and I know you are happy back with Dad now and no longer in pain. Thank you for sacrificing and hanging in there for us for us all to say our goodbyes. I am forever grateful for the ability to make that last memory. I am so empty yet and yet so full at the same time. I love you both so much. We'll wait to see what other blessings you send our family. Mom, you taught me so much in life, but I thank you most for your deep faith. I always made sure to carefully plan every trip back so I could be there with you in church on Sunday because I knew how much that meant to you. Thank you all for the beautiful memories. And when you and Dad and later j just visited, we had so much great laughs and great times together. I will miss getting cards. You make getting the mail will no longer be met with a smile or anticipation of a beautiful homemade card that you would send at the beginning of every month without fail. You have more than done your job on earth. So please rest in peace. Until we meet again. Mella. We are blessed. But we have one other video for you that's shared, and I want to, this, this one's from Adam and Eleanor, and I just invite you to take this in um, and just kind of journey along with them in this video. <laughs>
much.
Well, we give thanks for all these wonderful family tributes along the way for the love that's so abundant and so boldly shared. One of the songs that uh, Barb is kind of a traditionalist, if you will, in many ways, but she loved some of the newer music as well. And this song, uh, I know she loved because it really spoke about her faith and her love of God and how God works in this world. It's called Lead Us From Death To Life. And we're going to invite you to sing it with us. If you don't know it, you soon will. Uh, that is in your hymnal uh, as well. Is it in our hymnal? Page, yes, 581. Yeah, page 581. If you need the music, well, the words will be up here. a great song, and I know that uh, on Barb's journey that she loved uh, the message of God's radical message, God's love that is for all the world to hear and to experience a world of peace that she knew could be a reality, and we love, love talking about that. Now, a couple of scriptures that I have uh, picked for Barb for this service, uh, I'm going to share with one with you today, because I think this really speaks about where she really lived her life and her faith and trust in this God that we all know. So in Romans chapter 8, it says this, What then are we to say about these things? 
If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, but who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. But who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all of creation, nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what Barb believed, that there is nothing to separate us from God's love. And then one passage that she demanded that I share today, nicely, of course, from Luke chapter 12. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. And this is Barb. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We heard those stories about the treasure of the heart and the love and the wisdom and the grace. And then the reading of the 23rd Psalm, and I know how she loved this. When we would say it together, whether we were praying together or in worship, whenever we would use this passage, tears would come. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those beautiful words to speak to us today, especially in this time. And I really want us to reflect back on those passages that I just read in particular about Barb's life in our midst. First of all, I want to thank again all those who shared, whether from the distance and the videos and, and, and Bailey and Gloria and Pam, your messages today are so beautiful. I know Barb would be proud so proud. It's apparent how Barb impacted you all, all of us, and how we impacted her as well. She wasn't on an island by herself, but she really felt compelled to share that love, to know people, and she wanted to just learn from everybody along the path. And as I got to know Barb over these 20 years, one thing that really stuck out for me with her is she was just wanting to be the sponge of knowledge and sponge of faith, and she just was so worked so hard trying to figure out this whole life thing that we live. So what better scriptures are really for Barb than the 23rd Psalm that I just read in particular? It served as a testament for her 79 plus years here on earth. She lived that good, long, faithful life. She kept the faith and and lived her life with no remorse. And when I think about Barb, this is the passage that kept ringing true because God was her shepherd. No matter what life brought her way, there was God with her. You could, you could see God through her. God walked with her. God lifted her up. And God inspired her. God moved her. God comforted her even to her last breath. 
And when I think about Barb, faith. Faith is that word that comes to mind. Her life was a living testament about what faith was for her, but for all of us, she witnessed to us without even saying anything. It's a way that she lived her life, how she raised her family, how she became friends with so many. And because of her great faith, when I think about Barb's life and celebrating her life today, I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm being flippant. I normally am, but right now I'm not, or that I'm lacking empathy. But honestly, I'm really finding it a, a little difficult, even though I'm sad and tearful today. I'm really not sorrowful today. Sure, we're grieving and we're hurting, and without a doubt, she's going to be missed. I will miss her. I've already shed those tears, and I know this church will miss her. I know Samaritan Bethany will miss her. I know that you, her friends, will miss her. I know you, her family, are, are, are going to miss her. She's going to be missed because she brought that simple perspective of what true faith and happiness and joy and sunshine was wherever she went. Now, when I say I can't be sorrowful, but rather I feel like rejoicing and, and giving thanks for this life. And when I say that, I think that we are paying the highest compliment to Barb. And I believe that's the way that we should, she would want it for us today, for us to rejoice and to give thanks and celebrate and thank God for this beautiful, long life. Because when you met her, you knew, though, you knew that no matter what you threw at her, what came away, no matter how much pain or struggle she was experiencing, no matter how inconvenient life was or how uncomfortable it was, she faced each day with this great joy and celebration. The, the, this day began and she was down on her feet, ready to go. And we were blessed. We were blessed by the way that she lived her life. And I say this because those who knew her, you knew that she regarded every day of life as an extraordinary gift from God. And that we only shouldn't take that gift and hide it, but we needed to share it with other people. Now, I never saw her bitter or envious, maybe others did, but I never saw it, about what she could do or not do or what she could or cannot afford. It was never in her wheelhouse. She just simply lived, simply each day, to the fullest with eyes wide open to the gifts and blessings that God had given her. So I just want to gather us together just for a moment to say thank you. Thank you, God, for sharing Barb with us because we were blessed. And I think we need to find a way to rejoice and to give thanks. Because I do believe Barb's life could be an example for all of us. Barb used her life, her blessings, as a blessing to the fullest. And didn't do it for herself. She didn't do it for her own glory. In fact, it was totally the opposite. That was another beautiful thing about Barb. She literally lived her life for other people, her family, for her friends, for her church, for Samaritan Bethany. She lived her life full of faith and grace and the class to live her life fully and wholly. And for so many of us who were blessed with her presence and that smile, although it always looks like she's up to something, doesn't it? We're going to miss her. We will miss not only her unconditional, unselfish love and her generosity and compassion, but also her hours of committed ministries to this church and to the community, many, which, many of which went unnoticed and unseen. But that's the way she wanted it to be. Now, Barb not only loved to teach, but she loved to learn. And Barb was what, what she taught and how she lived. Barb was a consummate teacher of faith and life. And as we heard, Barb led those Bible studies. And Gloria, yes, I did hear about you being an okay person. So that's good. Barb loved the Bible. She loved the Bible and... They're here on display in front, too. She loved to read it. She loved to study it. She loved to explore it. And I'm here to tell you, she always had questions. Questions and more questions. She was always wanting to get more information and learn more about it. And when she had led her weekly women's Bible study here, I can tell you that nearly every week I could expect that knock on my door. <laughs> Pastor Paul, Barb has a question in Bible study. Can you come? 
there I go. And not easy questions about, well, what does this word or that mean? It was more theological. And I remember one day I went in there and she said, we're talking about the Trinity. Can you explain that to us in 30 seconds? And I did my best. I thought it was pretty profound and pretty clear. And when I was done, she just looked at me and smiled and said, I still don't get it. Barb just wanted to learn. She wanted to know. She wanted to know the reality of her faith and the truth of the message. She loved it when I would preach about the radical good news of God's love for all the people. She loved that message. She wanted to hear the power and the strength of God's word. Not some fluffy Jesus, but the Jesus who got his hands and his feet dirty and worked with the poor and the oppressed. She lived for those moments because she wanted to learn more about who this Jesus guy was, not only then, but for now. She wanted to learn about life and death. She wanted the truth. She didn't want anything sugar-coated. And the beautiful thing about Barb is that she could handle the truth. She wanted it. So Barb taught us all well about faith. That life is not about us. No matter how much we want our way, it's not about us. She taught us about forgiveness and grace and love, unselfishness and serving and helping and praying and accepting and being adaptable about accepting all people and just loving one another. It was not a hard message for her because that's who she was. But I have to be honest, Barb could be direct at times, right? To the point. She could be very honest and believe that what I say that she was direct with everyone, including me. You knew exactly where she stood. And that's what I loved about her. She's so involved with the church and all of her activities. She's a lover of God, supporter of so many ministries, engaged in events. And over at Samaritan Bethany, where she gave of her time as a volunteer through the years. And then her life with the love of her life, Gary. All those trips that they took and oh, how she loved Gary. And how he loved her. She loved to tell those stories and when we sing those old hymns and the memories of her upbringing as she grew up. And we didn't always agree on everything, especially when it came to baseball because she's a Twins fan and I was a Cardinal fan. But we had that loving battle that would always take place. And she talked often for those at Samaritan Bethany at those wonderful coffee clutches and happy hour discussions and how life just came full and complete for her when she had that opportunity to be there. And the trips with our senior saints. And her dear friend Betty. When Betty and Barb were on the bus, you knew it. Because they were like two teenagers. And we would take all these trips with senior saints. Senior saints are the folks over 65. We would take them all over the area on a bus. And we just had a great time. And there Barb and Betty were the last two to be found as we were ready to go. They were off shopping somewhere or doing things they were not supposed to be doing. But what joy it was to watch the two of you. When I saw Barb, I knew love was in motion because that's who she was. And I saw that most with you, her family. We heard those tributes today. I've heard all these stories about y'all. Bailey will talk later. Only good things. She was so proud of all of you. And she was so certain to make sure that we all knew that. And I know for you, her family, it will be different and strange not having her around. She was the center and axis of your family. You've been blessed to her last breath of being with her and loving with her. Dan, I know your Saturdays will never be the same. Year after year, month after month, week after week, your Saturday visits as you shared your unfailing love. And Pam, when you came to visit here, and you mentioned that in your writing about coming to church, Barbara would always give me a heads up, Pam's coming to church. So and I don't know if that's warned me or not, but 
But you coming to town and coming to church is special for her. And to your grandkids, how she was so proud of you. Talking about all your activities and involvements, about your visits. She loved you so much. So what a blessing. In the last visit that she was able to speak with us, she knew her time was only a few days away. But she said, I got to see my great grandbabies and my family one last time. And that prayer was answered because the family was able to gather together, hugs were given, meals were shared, and hugs were embraced. Her life was full and complete. And yes, she was ready. She had no fear about what the next step was. She was ready to celebrate the day. So today, I feel like rejoicing. I feel like smiling because I know that that's what Barb would want out of us. Because I know that Barb believed that there would be nothing that could separate her from the love of God. Nothing. Not even death itself. And I think the barber would probably be a little bit embarrassed today. She didn't want to be that center of attention. And so I think she'd be a little bit embarrassed about what, what's going on today because it's not that she doesn't deserve it. She sure, certainly does for, for everything that we've said today is so true. But however, as I said just before, she was not the type that wanted attention on herself. It was all about the other. So she would rather give the praise and the honor and the glory and thanks to God. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for sharing Barb Carew with us. Let us rejoice. Let us smile. Let us give thanks for this rich, wonderful, bold life. Let's give thanks. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Our most merciful God, we do thank you for your word, for it is a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. And we thank you, especially in the days and nights of our grief and in the shadows of our sorrow, that we are never left alone to ourselves. We are not separated because we have the light of your promises to sustain us and comfort us. So through our tears today, give us vision to see in faith the consolation which you intend for us. Let us rejoice and give thanks, O God, as we come together and we celebrate the life of this your servant, Barb Carew, for all that she's given and all that she shared. And as we gather and we celebrate and give thanks, we celebrate the rich, wonderful life and the blessing that God, the Barb gave to us each and every day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Barb loved the song. When I survey the wondrous cross, and the other song that she loved was a gift of love. So we were blurging those two songs together. She always liked it when we did this, especially when Tom and I would mess up. <laughs> but we do this as a gift to the family and to Barb this day.
much as he has first verse with us again. been blessed today and to celebrate the rich, wonderful gifts of Barb. So I invite you as we prepare to go from this place to receive the benediction. And if you are able, I invite you to please rise. My friends, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with kindness and grace, and peace. In the name of God, the creator of all things, in the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.